Hello, I'm Stuart Roberts from NDF Research, and I'm with Dr. James Garner, who's the CEO of Casia Therapeutics. Uh, Casia recently announced interim data on its phase one study of its Cantrexel drug in the treatment of ovarian cancer. Now, James, for those unfamiliar with Casia, can you tell us about Cantrexel and what you were trying to do with this study? Thanks, Stuart. Uh, Cantrexel is a drug that originated with our predecessor company, Novagen, and uh, was developed through a collaboration with Yale University. It's a really interesting agent because it's shown activity against so-called ovarian cancer stem cells, which we think are part of how diseases like ovarian cancer become resistant to chemotherapy and how they recur after successful treatment. So we started back in December 2016 a phase one clinical study to look at uh, Cantrexel in the human setting. And uh, uh, as with all phase one studies, this is primarily looking to understand the safety profile of the drug. Uh, and uh, that's some of the data we've been able to share recently. So um, you've talked about this data coming from your dose A escalation component. So I take it we've started low and we've, we've escalated up the dose. And, and that's the data we have here. That's right. So, so the the, day, the study that we've started is uh, uh, the study we've been conducting is a, a phase one dose escalation study. Now, the way a dose escalation study works is that we start by giving a very low dose of the drug to just one patient, and we see how that patient responds. We look to understand how the drug is tolerated by the patient. If it's tolerated well, we increase the dose and we give that to a second patient and see how that patient responds. And we continue doing this and, and increasing the dose each time until we start to see evidence of toxicity. So, uh, so hence dose escalation, we gradually increase the doses. Now our study has the ability to go up through eight dose levels as a, as a maximum. And, and although we start off recruiting at each dose with just one patient, if we start seeing evidence of toxicity, we can recruit additional patients, three patients or even six patients at a given dose level. So it's fair to say this was uh, good news because you, you've, you've got a very, so far, very safe drug that, that where we don't know what the maximum tolerated dose is. Which is, which is good because ordinarily uh, a lot of cancer drugs reach their maximum tolerated doses at levels that aren't efficacious, right? That's absolutely right. So uh, we haven't yet determined our maximum tolerated dose, and, uh, but so far the drug seems to have, have uh, gone down fairly well with patients. It's moved through the, the dose cohorts, mostly with just one patient in, in each cohort, which is why the number of patients is at the lower end of the range. So we're really encouraged. I think this points to a, a, a drug that uh, so far seems to be safe and well tolerated. Now, always the, uh, the caveat is that the study is ongoing. We're still learning more, um, but so far so good. And uh, so you've recruited, uh, I think you said 12 patients. Uh, 10 patients. 10, sorry. 10 patients, okay. And we can recruit up to 42, depending on whether you've, you, you, you meet up with those, those, those toxicities. So uh, uh, that begs the question, are you satisfied with your recruitment? The nature of these dose escalation studies is they always stop and start as each dose level progresses. So we start, you know, we, we start by recruiting that one patient and then we wait to see how she does before we recruit the next one. So, so there's always a gap of you know, say six to eight weeks at a minimum between each patient. And so, uh, so given that, I think the study's actually progressed ab about as, uh, as, as well as, uh, as, as it could. We, um, we, you know, we, we're, we're very big on benchmarking what right. we do in Casio, and we've looked at our study in comparison to other ovarian cancer studies across the industry. And, and what we see when we compare how we're doing with others is that both the size of the study, the number of patients, and the duration uh, and the, the rate at which we're recruiting patients really seem pretty comparable with, with other studies that other companies have run in the industry. So I think we're, we're pretty satisfied with progress. Okay. Now, in, uh, in, in cancer, the phase one studies, uh, as you say, are primarily about uh, um, safety, but often there's an efficacy readout given the nature of the patients that you're recruiting. And in this Absolutely. case, it's, it's, um, it's uh, uh, relapsed or refractory uh, ovarian cancer. So did you have any efficacy signals coming out of the data so far? Sure, we, we did. So uh, I think you're absolutely correct that, that these studies are always safety studies first and foremost. That's really what we're looking to understand is the safety and the tolerability of the drug. 
but we absolutely look out for efficacy of, uh, as, as well. Out of the 10 patients we've recruited so far, there are five where we can draw any really meaningful conclusion about efficacy. And of those five, three of them have shown what we call stable disease. Right. And one of those has gone it's on... Stable, the, the tumour has neither advanced or declined. Exactly, right. exactly. Which in an aggressive cancer can, can be a good sign. That's right. right. It, it certainly suggests that the drug may be slowing down the progression of the disease, stopping it getting worse. And these are all patients who failed first-line chemotherapy. Right. So by definition, they're, they're more advanced patients. So, so, so that's, a, that's an encouraging sign. And that was seen after, after two cycles of Cantrixel as a by itself. Self. We went on in the study to then give patients uh, cantrixel in combination with chemotherapy, and we right. saw one of those three patients actually had a reduction in okay. their tumor without what we call a partial response. Right. Right. And, uh, and that's also really encouraging because, again, bear in mind, these are patients who have failed first-line chemotherapy. Now, uh, from, from here we go to, to, to uh, uh, part B of the study. Uh, at, at what, once we've established what, what we think the maximum tolerated dose is. Talk to us about what Part B would involve. So in Part B, we're going to enroll another 12 patients we're currently projecting at the maximum tolerated dose. They'll all be getting the same dose. The, there won't be any kind of real significant change in dose. And that will hopefully be the dose that we'll be using for subsequent studies. And so in that Part B, we'll be really looking for uh, evidence that, that the drug's working. We'll be looking at, at uh, response using these same rhesus criteria. And we're also looking at some other measures of response, certain blood tests, yes. what we call biomarkers, to, to see if we can uh, get a better feel for how Cantrixel is benefiting right. these patients. So this is what we've reported recently is is really early data and there's, there's much more to come as the study progresses. Sure. Okay, so, so it's fair to say early days, uh, uh, but on balance, what we've got is some good news. So we, we think so. I, I think the, uh, as a, the, the crucial thing that we're looking to learn in a study like this is, is the safety of the drug. And, and on evidence so far, I think we've seen an encouraging data. You know, Cantrixel seems to be tolerated by most of the patients in the study. And uh, we've been able to, to get right through the, the dosing with uh, a relatively small number of patients. I, I think that's very encouraging. Right. The, uh, the efficacy data, I think, is, is really only a, a very, very early first look. Uh, but again, it's great to see that there seems to be some evidence that the drug is active, right. that it's offering benefit right. to these patients. So we'll, we'll continue to learn more, and this is uh, early days for Cantrexel, to, to be sure. But, uh, but I, th I think a, a good start to the clinical experience with the drug and uh, you know, some, uh, some exciting readouts ahead over the next 9 or 12 months.